Question. Can you be a Christian and not bear fruit? Don't answer it. We're going we're gonna to read the scriptures and then we'll decide by the scriptures. Can you be a Christian and not bear fruit? Let's look at some verses in chapter above John 15. Because we're in John 15, but let's look at some chapters above it. In John 14, 15, the Lord says, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. That's just a very short sentence, but there's so much in that sentence. If you love me, keep my commandments. Are we keeping his commandments? He, is he, did, he didn't say, keep some of my commandments. He says, keep my commandments. That means all of them. Or are we these kind of Christians who go around and we're like, well, I'm not sure about that one. I'll just leave that one aside. I don't think I want to <clears throat> obey that one. These that are easy for me to obey, I'll obey these. But these over here, this one over here, I don't know. But the Lord says, if you love me, you will keep all his commandments. Amen. If you love them, we're going to find out if we love the Lord or not through the scriptures we're going to be reading. You will know tonight if you love the Lord. He says, if you truly love me, keep my commandments. What is true love? What love is he talking about here? The love that Jesus has for us is called an agape love. That's God's love. And to, to show God's love, John ten seventeen. Therefore doeth my Father love me. This is Jesus speaking. Because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Jesus laid down his life. Is that the kind of love we have for our Father? A physical love? That we, that we would lay down our lives. There's people overseas that are doing it right now. They're laying down their life for the Lord. Now ask yourself, do I love the Lord that much? Do I really love them that much where if someone puts a, a, a sword or an axe to my neck and says, are you a Christian? Am I, am I ready and willing to say, yes, I am, knowing that I'm getting ready to get my head cut off? There's people who are doing it. There's Christians who are doing it. They must have that kind of love. So we're asking ourselves today, do I have that kind of love to lay down my life? Priscilla and Aquila. In Romans 16.4, these are two women. It says in Romans 16.4, it says, Who have for my life laid down their own necks. They laid down their life for Paul. Now, if they laid down their lives for Paul, how much more do you think they would for the Lord? But they were willing to lay down their life. So we see it being done. We're reading the scriptures. They've done it several times. Not just these two women, but... Most all the disciples had to lay down their life for the Lord. So do we love the Lord that much? This doesn't only mean physically. In Matthew 22, 37, it shows it means spiritually also. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and all thy mind. That's laying down your life. That's giving your life to the Lord. That's laying it down. I long, Jesse no longer has a life. My life is the Lord's now. I have laid down my life. I have gotten rid of Jesse and put the Spirit there and put the Lord there. Spiritually, that's laying down your life. So there's doing a way of doing it physically and there's a way we do it spiritually. Have we? Have we gave them all of our heart, soul, and mind? Have we? Think about it. Think about, okay, my heart contains this. My soul contains all this. And my mind, co- have we? Give him all of that. Like I said, these are questions for yourself tonight. If we can't keep his commandments, how can we say we love him? Makes sense, don't it? How can I say I love him if I'm not obeying him? He's my father. He's my Lord. He's my God. And if I'm not obeying him, how can I say I love him? Luke 6, 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? He's plainly saying it right here. Why are you calling me Lord, but you don't do what I tell you? Is that showing love? You say you love him. You call him Lord, but yet we don't do the things he says. Now, as I'm doing this teaching, if you find yourself in that boat, all you got to do is repent. If you really, truly, from the heart, really mean it, at any time through this teaching, you can say, Lord, forgive me. If you realize, hey, I have not been loving the Lord the way it says in the scriptures. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. We can ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So don't let this bring you down. Just open your eyes to it and say, Thank you, Lord. I needed to know that. If you can't keep the commandments, it says you will see God's wrath. Romans 2.8 But He will pour out His anger and His wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness, who live for themselves. If you disobey any commandment, then you're, that, you're, that part of your life you're doing for yourself. Well, he wants me to do this, but no, I'm not going to do that. Well, now you're living, you're, now you're living for yourself because you didn't obey him here. You might obey others, other commandments, but if you don't obey him on this one, listen to me. If you don't obey him on any commandment, then you're, you're living for yourself because you're disobeying one. All it takes is one. John 14, 21. He that my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. So the scripture right here is saying, you want to prove your love to your Father, to the Lord? You want to prove it? He says, obey his commandments. If you really want to show God how much you love him, obey his commandments. That's what it says right here. And if you want to see Jesus, he says right here, you want to see Jesus? Love him and keep his commandments says right here and will manifest myself to him the Lord will show himself to us if we love him and keep his commandments amen, amen. John 14 23 Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and and we will come unto him and make our abode with him if you love the Lord God will live in you it says it right here. He will come and live in you. How many of us want, the, want God to come live in us? I do. Amen? Amen. I'd be scared to have, not to have the Lord in me. But he says, if, and most of these verses are talking about loving Him and keeping His commandments. John fifteen nine, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. A lot of times when we get born again, we show our love to Him, we get baptized, we do all the things, then little by little, we just start, little by little, start doing things our way again. Right here He says, continue in my love. Continue to show me your love for me. Not just when you get first born again and you're all excited, but continue. This means always. Always show your love to me, is what He's saying. John fifteen twelve. This is my commandment that ye love one another. As I have loved you. That's a big one. Do we know how much Jesus loves us? Suffered tremendously. Suffered. He suffered more than any man will ever suffer. Any man who would have gone through what Jesus went through wouldn't have made it. They would have died before they got on the cross. That's the way we need to love. As he loved us, that's the way we need to love our brothers and our sisters. John fifteen sixteen. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you. Right here, ordained you means He has given us the authority. He has given us the authority. That you should go and bring forth fruit. Go and bring forth fruit. He's given us the authority to do this. To go and bring forth fruit. And we'll see what that fruit is. And that your fruit should remain whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name. He may give it you. Jesus says that He first chose us. And those of us who said yes to Him, He's made us righteous. He has made us righteous. And you think, well, why didn't, why, why didn't He just take us on home then? Why don't he, okay, Lord, I accept You. I'm born again. I love You. I give my heart to You. Okay, come home. <laughs> you know, that would be great. But why doesn't He do that? Because He could. But why doesn't He? Because He wants us to bear fruit. That's why. To have the love He has for us to give to others. The love that He gave us, He wants us to give to others. To tell others about the gospel. To tell others about Him. That's why He doesn't take us home. He wants us to bear fruit. Matthews 4.19 And He saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, I will make you fishers of men. If you're not witnessing to people, 
because that's what I will make you fishers of men. That's what that means. So if you're not witnessing the people, guess what? You're not following him. If you follow him, you will witness. You will be a witness. There's no if, ands, or buts here. There's no way out of it if you're a follower. He says, follow me and I will make you fishermen, fishers of men. Can't follow him if you're not obeying his commandments. This is a command. He says, he says to Christians who, who love him, he says, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. I will have you out there witnessing about me, planting the seed. You will fish for men. You might not have ever looked at it that way. But he says it right here. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He's going to have the angels in heaven tell the gospel. And that's in Revelation 4.16. It talks about the angels giving the gospel. But that's not until then. That's not until the end time. So he's going to have the angels do it. Also, God himself, Jesus, God himself came down and witnessed to Paul. Who did Paul hear when he gave his life to the Lord? He heard God speaking to him on the Damascus road when he was prosecuting the Christians. And God says, why are you prosecuting me? Remember that? So who witnessed to Paul? God did. It wasn't a man. It wasn't a man that got Paul to convert to being a Christian. It was God himself. That's our responsibility. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So the angels are going to the are gonna do it later. God has already done it in the New Testament to Paul. And we're just supposed to follow. We're supposed to follow him, right? Yeah. John fifteen seventeen. It says, These things I command you, that you love one another. This is a command. Plainly a command. Like I said, he is not saying, Will you do this? Can you do this? No, he's saying, I command you. That you love one another. As a word love. Love. We're going to see love is very important. And we're going to see what it is. We need to remember that all of this is being said. In the same night. When he was betrayed. All this is going on now. The same night when he was betrayed. For two chapters. Jesus speaks about love. John 13, 14, 15. Those three chapters. We're going to see that all he's talking about is love. Now let's go back to John fifteen eight. It's, he says, Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. The subject is love. Right? That's what we've been talking about. So what do you think the fruit is? If that's all he's talking about is love, and we're talking about fruit, then the fruit is love. Love. And that's why he, we've read all these, these verses Talking about love and following Him. Following His commandments. Love Him. Love is the number one fruit. Number one fruit. That shows who we are. Is our love. Let's go further back in John 13. Verses 34 and 35. It says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. This isn't really a new commandment. Because he told us in Leviticus 9.18, 19.18, I mean, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So he's already told us to do this. It's not really a new commandment. It is a new commandment, but I'm going to show you as far as the love, he still, he wanted them to love their neighbor back in the Old Testament. He wants us to love our brothers and sisters and our neighbors today. But the difference is, we have Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross, who showed us what love is. Jesus showed us what love is, by suffering and dying on the cross. That's the love we, the Lord has shown us. That's the love I want you to have. For your brothers and sisters, and right here it says, for their neighbors. Which he gave us this love in Romans 5.5. Jesus gave us this love. It says in Romans 5.5. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. We have that love. We have it. But just like 
the Holy Spirit, do we use the power of the Holy Spirit or we do we just let it sit there? We have the love of God in us. We have the agape love. Or do we treat it the same way as the Holy Spirit and we just let it sit inside of us and we don't show it? Because we have it. Right here it says He gave it to us. And the Holy Spirit, He gave us this love. So we do have it. This is why we can love like Jesus loved. Jesus suffered tremendously and died on the cross. We can have that kind of love. That kind of love is in us. So that's what it's talking about. A new, a new one. It's still love, but the new love we have is that it's been shown to us and now we know how to love because the Lord has given it to us. It is the Holy Spirit that is in us. Amen? Amen. Husbands, love your wife. That's what he's talking about, agape. Husbands, love your wife. Let me make sure everybody knows what I'm talking about, love. Let me tell you what it doesn't mean. He's not talking about lovemaking. Husbands, love your wife. Really, seriously, I have to point that out. Because it has been said to me one time, and I'm not going to, but I'm just <laughs> telling you, it doesn't mean lovemaking, okay? It doesn't mean that. But husbands, love your wife. I should be ready to lay down my life for her. I should be ready to suffer for her. And I need to forgive her just like Jesus forgives me all the time. Amen? Husbands, do you hear me? That's what kind of love the Lord wants us to have for our wife. And again, the only way we can do that is through the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot love that way in the flesh. If you're walking in the flesh, you're not going to have that kind of love. For your wife or for the Lord or for anyone. You've got to be walking in the Spirit to have this kind of love. Now we, we can't understand why God loves us so much. We can't, I mean, n- none of us can. If we really think about it, well, I'm not so bad. No, yes, you are. Without the Lord, we are wicked, period. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Mary Poppins. I don't care if you're Mother Teresa or Dennis or whatever her name is. Every one of us deserve hell. We do not have that love without the Lord. And we can't. Like I said, it's hard for me. I'm, I'm thinking all the time, Lord, why do you love us so much? I mean, look what we've done. Look what we're doing. But yet you love us. That's an agape love. That's God's love. And we have it. Just remember this. Just like I always tell you, you have the power of God in you. You have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Use it. So now I'm telling you, you have the love, the agape love of God in you. Use it. He gave it to us. He didn't just give it to us so it could just sit inside of us and do nothing. If He gives us things, then He's given it to us because He wants us to use it. Amen? Amen? Now back to John 13, verse 35. By this... Shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. How do people know we're Christians? By loving one another. By showing our fruit, the fruit of love. That's how people are going to know we are Christians, by loving one another. Are the Pentecostals and the Baptists, are they loving one another? No. All they want to do is argue about scriptures. That's not showing love. Right here the Lord says, hey, lost people will know you by your fruit. And that fruit is love. Religions have different opinions on the scriptures. On these scriptures that, like last week I showed you how some religions believe the scriptures mean this and others mean another thing. But there's one thing that we all agree on on these scriptures. We all agree that it's talking about love. That's one thing we all, all the scriptures I've been giving you. All religions, Pentecost, Baptist, Methodist, no matter what it is, they all agree that these verses are talking about love. Now, some of the other part of the verses that I've given you last week, they have different, uh, we have different opinions on what the scriptures mean. But not on this. We all agree that these verses are talking about love. 1 John 3.14 We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. That's how we know we've gone from death. We were all dead, right? Mm -hmm. Until we accepted Jesus. When we accepted the Lord, He gave us life. It says, Because we love the brethren. 
That's how we know we got born again, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Meaning you're still dead. If you don't love your brother, you're still dead. It says it right here. Read it. If you don't have that love, you're still dead. I'm just reading the scriptures, right? Yeah. I'm reading the scriptures to you. I'm not, well, I think, or no, I'm just reading the scriptures. We know that we have passed from death onto life because we love the brethren. That's how we know we're born again, because we love the brethren. And if we don't, it says we're still dead. There is only one way to look at these verses, but to see that the fruit is talking about love. The fruit is love. Now let me ask you a question. Let me ask you the question again. Can you be a Christian, a real Christian, a real Christian, and not have love? The fruit of love. Let me say this before you, you answer that. But before I say it, I'm reading the scriptures. We don't want to hear what Jesse has to say. We don't want to hear what man has to say. Let's see what the scripture. We want to know what the scriptures have to say, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I like to use the scriptures to explain the scriptures. Now, this is Israel after the Lord brought them out of Egypt. The Israel we're speaking about is lost Israel, the nation, Israel, the nation. Remember, Israel. When we're when I'm talking about the fruits in Israel, I'm talking about the nation Israel and how they got away from the Lord. I mean, the Lord brought them out of Egypt. And as soon as they, well, even before they got into the wilderness at the Red Sea, they were already throwing up their hands and blaming Moses. You brought us here to, to die, blah, blah, blah. Even before then, they were, they were not looking toward the Lord for help. In Psalms 80, verse 8, and then 12 through 19. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Who is God saying the vine is? No, right here, it's, it's Israel. Oh, right here. Yeah. God drove away the heathen nations, it said, and it brought them to his, oh, and, and he brought them into his land. Yeah. In verse 12, Why hast thou then broken down her hedges, so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her? They're asking the Lord, Why did you take our protection away? They're asking the Lord that. And let the enemy come in and steal from us. Israel, the nation of Israel, that's not born again, they're asking the Lord, why are you taking our protection away? Hello? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's today also. Something, if you're not walking with the Lord and then you get in trouble, something happens to you, you're like, well, why didn't the Lord take care of me? If you're not walking with Him, He's not going to take care of you. You're out of from His protection. We have to walk with Him to have that protection. Verse 13, the boar out of the, out of the wood doeth waste it, and the wild beast of the field doeth devour it. He took away their hedges because of sin, because of their disobedience. They just didn't obey the Lord. That's why he took their hedge away. Verse 14, return, we beseech you, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, and behold, and visit this vine. Now this is Israel, the same nation that made a golden calf. To worship. And now they're asking the Lord all this. They made their own God. But now they're like. Oh God come back to us. They know the Lord. They know the Lord God. But they wanted to do things their way. What happens? The hedge is gone. Now they're begging the Lord. Now they're begging him to come back. All we have to do is read the Old Testament. And we'll see. They never did belong to him. So how did, how's he going to take them back when they were never his? God said that the Jews was his chosen people. He didn't say, this is my uh, Christian nation. He didn't say that. He just said, these are my chosen people. And I've taught him that before. That there was nothing special about the Jews. He just picked them. He picked them to use them to show other nations about him, about himself, God. That's why he chose them. Not because they were great holy people or anything like that. At this time, Israel was saved from being slaves. They were saved, but they were saved from being slaves in Egypt. The nation was not born again nation. We even see that today. The Jews, even today, do not recognize Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Son of God. Even today, it's still the same. It's still there. Okay, verse 15. And the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, 
and the branch that thou makest strong for thyself. It is burnt with fire, it is cut down, they perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou makest strong for thyself. Now who do you think they're talking about here? They're talking about Jesus. They're talking about the Messiah. That's who they're talking about here. They're asking for the Messiah to come and save them. That's what these verses are saying. Then in verse 18, So will not we go back from thee quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Like I said, the nation is crying out to the Lord, telling him that we will not leave you again. That's what they're saying. Make us alive, they said, so that we can call on your name. That's what they're saying. Reach out, reach out to us. Take care of us like you once did. And he did take care of them. But they kept messing up. And then they say, so we can have a chance to be saved. So right here it shows Israel, the nation is not a saved nation. Because it says it right here. And we shall be saved. Did they lose their salvation? No, they never had it. So they're saying here, so we can be saved. Israel had no fruits, and the Lord left them. That was a short little sentence. But what all did I say there? Israel had no fruits, and the Lord left them. So the question you need to be asking yourself, do I have the fruit? Do I have it? Because if I don't, just like the Lord left Israel for producing no fruit, and that's why He, he made Israel His people, to produce fruit. But they didn't. And what happened? He left them. Now we bring that to us. Am I bearing fruit? Am I bearing fruit? Now let's go to Matthew chapter 7. 15 through 20. Beware of false prophets. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are raven wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, now listen, verse nineteen, every tree that bringeth not forth Good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. There was a lot said right there. A lot said. Let me break it down a little bit for you. A mature Christian can spot a bad tree. A mature Christian can. Because there are so many people who all they show is bad fruit. And then a lot of people don't show no fruit at all. But we will know them by their fruits. Hebrews 5.14 But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Speaking about a mature Christian. Even those who by reason of use of their senses exercise their discern both good and evil. So we will know good fruit when we see it and we will know bad fruit when we see it. But what do you have to be to recognize that? You have to be a mature Christian. Baby Christians can't discern. They can't discern that. But a mature Christian can. Talking about wolves, false prophets, there's three good signs that you can see a wolf. Their character. Look at their, their character. Their motives for preaching or teaching. Is it to be a popular man? To be someone popular, well known? See how big of a church I can build? You know, there's a lot of Christians out, I mean, preachers out there, they want to have the biggest church in town. Yeah. So is that why they're in what, is that why they're doing what they're doing? Or are they doing it to reach people? To reach the lost? It's their motives. What is their motives for doing that? Where's their loyalty? Do they really love the sheep? Do they really love the, will they take what they have to help their brother or sister? And a lot of them are well off. But will they take what they have, and this is part of being a preacher, that you take what you have to help others? Are they doing that? I mean, these are things we can look at. 
to recognize a wolf, a false preacher. John the Baptist told the hypocrites, the religious hypocrites, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. In Luke 3, verses 8 and 9, it's John says, Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. They wanted to come and get baptized. And John says, Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to rise up children unto Abraham. They couldn't. They couldn't bring forth fruit. They couldn't. Why? Because they weren't born again. These were... This was religious leaders. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't produce the fruit. John says, bring forth fruit. They couldn't do it because they don't. They, could, they, they can't have it because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, back then the Holy Spirit wasn't yet. But they didn't have the love. They, back then you could still love. Not the agape love because you hadn't got the Holy Spirit yet to give it to us. But they just like it, uh, in the Old Testament where... where where God said, love your neighbors, they, weren't, they didn't love their neighbors. They only loved themselves. And you can see that through the scriptures. Verse 9. And now also the axe is laid onto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewed down and cast into the fire. How many verses do I have to read to show you? If you don't have the agape love, you're not born again. Because the Lord says right here, if you don't have this fruit, you're going into the fire. You're going to be cut down. And that's what it's saying. Like I say, it's, it's, again, it's saying you can't bring forth good fruit. You're going to end up in the fire. And we all know what the fire is. John has shown that if a person really repents and gives his life to the Lord and totally trusts him and loves him, he will, he will produce fruit. And I've read scriptures already to show that that we will, if we're truly born again, if we love the brethren. James chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, not understanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doeth it profit? Even so, even so faith if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Unless you help your brother and sister, I don't care how much faith you have. In, I just don't, I don't care how much faith you have. Right here it says faith is dead. Without works, it's dead. It can't work alone. Faith cannot work alone. It's, faith is a show. It shows. And right here it says if you don't, if you don't have it, it's dead. Faith without works is dead. 1 John 3.17 But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth him his, his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? I mean, he uses several verses here to show, how can you be mine if you don't show your love? Right here saying it again. If you don't show compassion on the brother, how dwelleth the love of God in you? How can you have God's love if you don't do these things? You either don't have it, or you have it, and you're not obeying God. Another sign of a wolf is greed. Is he doing it for the money? You can tell if they're always asking for money, that's a good sign right there. They're in it for the money. Because I've always said before, if a man is doing God's will, God's will, just like the disciples did, God would tell you, don't do anything, I'll take care of everything. If you're in God's will. But if these men have to beg for money. One. They're not in God's will. Because they're begging for money. Two. They're doing it out of greed. They're wanting money. Period. That's it. They depend on the tithe money. They won't reveal the danger. Of being a sinner. And not born again. And that, you, and that they're going to hell. Who's, who's going to want to give money for that? I mean they don't. They won't reveal to you the truth of God. Because it will affect the love offering. They will not preach on hell. They just won't do it. They will preach what people want to hear. That's what they're going to preach. We're going to preach what makes the people happy. And tonight, we saw that on that video. Ms. Osteen, I mean, she plainly showed it tonight. Let's make the people happy. The love offering will be good. 
That's why she said, because it's not biblical, that's for sure. It's totally opposite from what's in the Bible. But she says, God wants you to make yourself happy. That will make him happy. Don't make him happy. Make yourself happy. That is from the devil. That is a wolf. You can't get much more wolf than that when someone tells you, you're not here to make God happy. You're here to make yourself happy. And when you make yourself happy, then you make God happy. So who are we putting first? Ourselves. Ourselves. Wolves will not will not preach repentance, but they will preach this is good for you. Yeah. God wants you to have this. Just ask for it and he'll give it to you. They're always using the scriptures out of context anyway. But people want to hear that. That's what people want to hear. Just like in Israel, Jeremiah five, twenty six to thirty one. It says, Among my people are wicked men. Who lie in wait for victims like a hunter hiding in the blind. They continually set traps to catch people. And we're talking about wolves here. Like a cage filled with birds and their homes are filled with evil plots. And now they are great and rich. They are fat and sleek. And there is no limit to their wicked deeds. They refuse to provide justice to orphans. And deny the rights of the poor. Should I not avenge myself against such a nation? A horrible and shocking thing has happened in this land. The prophets give false prophecy and the priests rule with an iron hand. Worse yet, my people like it that way. Speaking about the Israel, lost Israel. Not his people, not Christians. We're talking about Israel here. My people, which I have chosen, is what he's talking about. My people like it that way. But what will you do when the end comes? They want encouragement. People want to hear encouragement. But they don't want to hear correction. The churches, they were like that here, back in the, uh, in the Old Testament. And they're still like that today. They want positive words, not negative. They don't want the negative truth, like, if you don't repent, you're going to hell. That's truth. But it's negative. They don't want that. These wolves love to preach about the Lord and what He can give. That's what they preach on. But they don't preach on what do you, we need to do to receive these blessings from Him, which is obedience. Yeah. They don't preach that. They just preach what God can give to us. That's what they do. The Lord is saying the people are satisfied with what they're being told. That's what I just read. And like I said, that's still today. Yeah. He says what they're doing is listening to wolves. And He says, what are they going to do on the time of judgment? What are they going to do? They enjoyed all this positive preaching, positive thinking. I can do, I can, I can get, I can have. But when the time comes, what are they going to do? Because they sure weren't born again. They weren't living to please the Lord. They were living to please themselves. So God's saying, what are you all going to do when the time of judgment comes? Because you're not going to have me. The third sign is... How many converts? Not how many, but what other converts? People who do turn to them. Wolves will have followers like they are. They're going to attract people like they are. Wolves are self-centered. What I can have? What can I have? What can I have? That's what his followers, that's what the followers are also. You can have, you can have, and that's why they follow him. Because they, they're preaching, oh, you can have this and you can have that. That's why they follow him. They're self-centered. What they can get. What pleases them, not the Lord, what pleases them. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching, which is the word of God. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ear wants to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. How true that is. Man, how true that is. Their followers are self-willed. They don't seek the will of the Lord. They're just like the wolf they follow. They're just like the wolf they follow. They act like Christians, but all they are is just religious people not obeying God's words. That's what they are. Just like the, the preacher is, the wolf is. They put on a good show, just like the preacher. Many cr religious people put on a good show in front of Christians. They talk about church, they talk about the Lord, but as soon as they're away from a true Christian 
and they're with the lost people. Not only do they talk where the lost people like it, but they also do. Wow, man, I went to a party last night, and man, blah, 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 blah. But they're not going to say that in front of a Christian. Yeah. They're deceivers, just like wolves are. They're deceivers. False preachers attract false believers. For following these wolves, for these people following these wolves, it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9-12, through 12, This man will come to the work of Satan with counterfeit powers and signs and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deceptions to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe these lies. Then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. This is what happens when they fall on the wolf. That's making them feel good. Remember, God says back in John 15, verse 2 and 6, Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. People who follow wolves are not going to produce good fruit. Isaiah 8.20 To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Man who preached not the word of God is because there's no light in them. There's no Holy Spirit in them. That's what that, the Isaiah 8.20 plainly says it. And again, I'm going to tell you, the Lord says if you're a mature Christian, you will spot a wolf. You will, if you are a mature Christian. That's why it's so important for us to study our word, the word of God. Luke chapter 3, verse 7 through 11, and then 16 and 17. Verse 7, Then said he, speaking about John the Baptist, to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generations of vipers, who hath won you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that... God is able to, for these stones to rise up children unto Abraham. Now, I've read this before, but I'm reading it again. Most all the people in the churches today couldn't handle this, what John just said here. Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Don't tell me you're a Christian. He's saying, show me you're a Christian. He says, show me. Don't just say I am. Don't tell me because I'm a Catholic I'm a Pentecostal, I'm a Baptist, whatever. Don't tell me because you're that, you're a Christian. Because it doesn't mean that. Don't tell me my daddy's a preacher. Because that doesn't make you a Christian either. You've been water baptized. Hmm. That means nothing. You tell me you're water baptized, that still doesn't tell me if you're a Christian or not. I speak in tongues. Again, that don't tell me anything. That does not tell me that you're born again. None of these make you a born-again Christian. Now, these are things we should get baptized. And some of us will get the gift of speaking in tongues. But you need to get born again before you get them. Now, because you say you do, there's a lot of false tongues out there. And there's a lot of people who's gotten, who have gotten water baptized and are not born again. God said, I can make these stones to be my children. Children of Abraham. John tells them the truth. Because he loves them. John's telling them the truth because he, he loves them. He wants them to come to Jesus. That's why he's telling them this. The truth hurts. But it's the truth of love. It's the truth to get you saved. Just like Jesus in uh, Luke chapter 4. When he went into a church, he preached the truth. And they wanted to kill him. Yeah. But then in the same chapter, at the end of the chapter, he went to another church and preached the truth. And they were amazed. They were astonished by his doctrine. Yeah. So there's two ways that people take the word of God. And, and today, from what I see, most people want to kill them. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to listen to wolves. Verse 9. And now also the axe is laid onto the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, which brings forth not good fruit is you down and cast into the fire. If you don't have the fruit of the Spirit, and I've shown you through this, through this teaching that you're not a Christian... And if you're not a Christian, you're cast in the fire. And we know what that means, like I said. 
verse 10, And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. This verse is saying that the same thing we've been talking about, showing love. That's the way we show love. If someone doesn't have and you do, give. That's, being a, that's, that's Christian love. That's agape love. Down to verse 16. John answered, saying unto them, All, I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I cometh, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you, baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There's other places in the Bible where fire means Holy Spirit. Just like right here. Fire means Holy Spirit. But verse 17, Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and he will gather the wheat into his gardener, but the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. But now, fire here means hell fire, the unquenchable fire. So when you read in the Bible and you see the word fire, it's either talking about the Holy Spirit or it's talking about hell fire, the unquenchable fire. Pray, pray that you have the right fire. Romans 7, 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should marry to another, meaning being united, even to him who raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. How did we become dead to the law? By dying with Christ. By getting born again. We died with him, but then we got born again. We were raised just like Jesus we We were raised from death to life. That's how we died to the law. You can't, you can't get saved by the law anyway. And what I'm talking about is, uh, Lord, I obeyed all your commandments. All your command, all your laws you had, I obeyed them. I didn't break one. Nobody, nobody can go to heaven that way. Only Jesus was able to keep all the law. Only Jesus. None of us can. Because we're either going to break them with thought or deed. We're either going to thank it or do it. So the Lord said, so the Lord said, you're free from that. Come to me. I will give you life. You can be saved through me. You can't be saved through the law. That's what he's saying here. And he's who are we married to? He says we're married to Jesus. And the reason he used the word married is because we're his bride. And his bride, what he wants from his bride, listen to me. He wants babies. And how do we make babies? Babies, I'm talking about. Christians. He wants us to go and produce more Christians. Do you understand that? That's that's what he wants. That's why he says, you're my bride. Now go out and have babies. Go out and get other Christians. Produce other Christians. Get people born again. Tell them about me. You can only do that through love. If you do not love that person that you don't even know, well, I'm not going to witness to, to him or her. I don't even know them. Lord says, love the neighbor. So whether you know him or not, you should be witness. If you have a chance to witness to that person, and you don't, then you're not a follower. So the fruit produces more fruit. Because the love. Not only should we tell our parents, that should be the first. Our, our family, our relatives, I mean, that should be without a doubt. The first people we even talk to. Then our friends. But the Lord says, even your neighbor, the person you don't even know. You need to tell them about me. So part of this is the love of God. You will be a witness. You will tell other people about the Lord. All these excuses you've been having, why you, do, why you shouldn't, why you couldn't, whatever. The Lord's telling you right here, if you're not, then you're not in my love. Because my love, that's what my love does. It loves others. 